What do you what do you have in your subconscious uh, uh, subconscious about Mary Poppins the the original that made you want to see more and want to be a part of this? What what was the thing from your first memory? Well, for me, it was I think in my blood, because and I think a lot of people feel that way. It's my first film I saw. Mm-hmm. I was four years old, 1964, so that dates me right there. <laughs> and, um, but I remember it. I remember the feeling of it. I remember that more than anything, the feeling of joy, the feeling of magic, the feeling of wonder and music and dance and all of that, which informed me for the rest of my life. And I really feel like, in a way, um, when this came to us and uh, came to me, um, of course we were, I was, nervous. <laughs> and trepidatious and, and daunted by all of it. But then I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. If someone's going to do it, I want to do it. Because I want to pay homage to that brilliant film um, with great care and thoughtfulness and passion and love. And I, and I hope you feel that in every frame in terms of the homage to the original film, because that's really what I felt. And I. But at the same time, we wanted to do, you know, I wanted to create an original musical, which I'd never done before. And that was a dream of mine, because I've always wanted to do that. And, and so it just felt like this was the way to do that. And we wanted to find uh, our own path to create an original story from the very beginning with this amazing team. Emily Lynn, do you have memories of when you saw the film first? Or? Sure. I mean, I, I think I was about... Um it was the first movie I ever saw. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to make you feel less old. No, um, <laughs> I think I saw it at around six or seven. And the lasting memory that I have of it was, yes, the magic and yes, the wonder, but the safety I felt in her hands. You know, this magical and yet sensible um, person who came into these people's lives and she swept everything up and she made it right again and the idea of bringing order to chaos and that you're in good hands and that she will work it out and you'll discover so much about yourself in the process Mm -hmm. I think that idea of she is a sort of savior she's like this sort of angel who is really batty and eccentric at the same time and Mm -hmm. um I just remember her really Um, And then when I took on the project, when Rob called me about it, um, I was filled with, you know, simultaneous thrill and fear, you know, because I knew I had my work cut out for me, very much so with this character that has imprinted um, in such a profound way on on the world, universally, you know. So it was that idea, well, how do I create my version of her, what is my version of her? Mm-hmm. And, and that seemed like a very exciting prospect that this is the next chapter and there's more magic to tell, there are more stories to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole experience was completely life affirming for me. It was just a delight. She is such a delight to play, just delicious. So Lynn. When did you first see it? Um, I think I had a fluffy white VHS cassette. Uh, I don't know if you kids, you won't remember this, but uh, we always had the Disney VHS cassettes were just a little bigger than the other cassettes. They were like fluffy and puffy and white, and they didn't uh-huh. fit in the rack with everyone else. Yeah, very satisfying. To sc- they were huggable VHS cassettes. And um, so I had that cassette, and I saw the first two-thirds of the movie hundreds of times, but I could never get through Feed the Birds because that melody was so sad um, that I would burst into tears and turn off the movie. Oh. I, didn't see the, I didn't see Step in Time in the end of the movie until I was like in high school. <laughs> um, I was, I was, I'm very melody sensitive. Um, and so, but supercalifragilisticexpialidocious for a word lover like me was the greatest song ever written. Um, and the fact that this word was invented for this song. And I have a, I have a best friend, Arthur Lewis, who we became best friends because he was the only kid I knew who could spell it backwards and forwards. Cool. It was like an intelligence test when you're a nerd like me. <laughs> um, so it's, it's when we started taking on this project again, you remember 
how much of the movie, every bit of it is in your DNA. I burst into tears when I saw the votes for women sash oh. on mm -hmm. the kite. Um, you know, it's there's just so much that we don't even realize is baked into our collective uh, unconscious. Mark, you have people who are going to be expecting it to look a certain way, to sound a certain way. And how were you working with Rob to make sure that you were able to create this world? What were some of the challenges that you had? Well, there's no greater joy for a producer in the world, particularly a producer who loves musicals as I do, to have the opportunity to work with Rob Marshall as your Amen. producer and director. <laughs> um, so it begins with that and, 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 uh, and my partner, John DeLuca, and, and, and Rob's partner. And it began with, of course, the love of the original film. I was seven when I saw it, a little older than Rob. Uh, and I remember those were the days you got dressed up and my parents took me downtown. I lived in the suburbs of Baltimore and it was like a big deal. And I thought, I, I remember thinking as I grew up, would I ever be able to be a participant in a film like that? And as I had a career in Hollywood, I wondered would Hollywood ever make movies like that again? And thank goodness we had the opportunity yeah. to make a film like this in this particular moment in time. And what gave me, of course, the, the, the confidence is the love that everybody here has and everybody making the film had for that film, the original film starting with Rob. So Rob and John came up and David McGee, our wonderful screenwriter, came, looked into the P.L. Travers books. There's seven books. There's, there are only episodes, but they're, they're delightful episodes. And then they came up on their own with this incredible story that is really, really magical and original um, that sets it in the depression, so there's a relevancy to today in terms of the challenges the family's facing. And then David went off and wrote this fantastic screenplay. And at the same time, I've got Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman at the table with Rob. <laughs> writing these incredible songs, these marvelous lyrics, again, with such love and passion for the original, but making it their own. And then Mark scoring the film beyond the song so brilliantly. And so it, for as a producer, and then a magnificent team of designers uh, uh, like John and, and Sandy Powell costumes and Dion Beebe's marvelous photography. So as a producer, I know that was a very long-winded answer, but this is the joy, this has been the joy of my life. It starts with this man, these glorious actors, and all those actors you saw. And it comes at a time where we all need it so badly to remember possibility. <laughs> And, and the fact that not only do we want to remember our childhood, we actually need to now. So that's my experience on Mary Pop. What was the hardest task of having the return and this new story and at the same time pain, uh, cre creating the world that felt like it belonged to uh, what had been created by the Sherman Brothers? Asking what was the hardest part yeah. of it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what was the easiest part? The, the, the Sherman brothers are right there. <laughs> and then, oh, we're going to also write songs for Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to the piano, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the hardest part. <laughs> Everything else. And so Meryl Streep and Angela Lansbury and Emily Blunt, no problem. Uh, uh, you know. What was going through your head as all of this came shooting down the pike to you to make real? Well, first off, how fun is all that? <laughs> I just always say I have the best job in the entire world. And I think everyone here feels they have the best job in the entire world. And this movie was possibly our best. Mark and I tease each other whenever we work together and say, this is our best one yet. <laughs> and Mark always grumbles, but last night he came to me and he said, you know what, John, this is the best one yet. <laughs> I had a great introduction to this because, and we haven't really talked about this, but maybe nine, 10 years ago when we were doing nine, we started talking about Mary Poppins. Mm. And you let me in on this wonderful story where you knew Julie Andrews and Tony Walton, and they told you, Tony Walton told you where he got inspiration for some of the sets from the first movie. Sure. And so I went on a hunt. I had my little notes from you, and I went to all the parks trying to find houses that looked like boats and, and found the Bolton's Crescent. So I had been waiting for the phone call from you for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> we actually designed the ride uh, while we were location scouting on a movie. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it was, it was, it it was, was kind deep of... Deep in all of our bloods. Yeah. Uh, so Emily, I want to ask you, uh, 
I, from watching the film, I th and I think everybody can actually feel it when Mary Poppins comes floating down, which must have been a fun shot. I don't know exactly how you did that, but... I'm not frightening at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had the best seat in the house for that one. <laughs> I mean, not that I could see Lynn, because Lynn was, like, that big, you know. <laughs> but that was a practical shot. She's 60 feet up, on a line, coming yeah. down. <laughs> I thought I was all right with heights until I was up there, and then I realized I wasn't, you know. Yes. It was just... And I, I just remember being up there and thinking... And that really was the moment, that entrance, where Rob very helpfully and in a very emboldening way played the incredible score, blaring from the speakers. And so it did help me sort of get over my... Yeah, we probably messed up the <laughs> shot over at yeah. Solo, which was shooting on the same lot. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Oh but it was that moment of coming, and it was all in one shot. So I start this big in the air, and I come down, and I have to walk into the shot and start speaking. And so, uh, but there, there was that moment up there where I was like, oh my God, I'm Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and Meryl Streep, when she saw the movie, she goes, how much you pay Rob Marshall for that entrance? <laughs> <laughs> first response talk about producing the music for this and, and making this very lush i think soundtrack and and making this whole thing uh seamless well something emily said reminded me of now this is where rob marshall is some kind of mad genius mm -hmm. because before we filmed he asked me to write a whole bunch of score and I was like, you're crazy. I, how can I score nothing? He, he said, well, this has got to be this, and it's this sequence and this, and I want to have this music on the set. I'm like, he's crazy. <laughs> so I went back to New York in, in our, our hiatus, our Christmas hiatus, and I read the script, and then I actually read the script like a radio play, including all the stage directions, and I, I tried to read it in the pace that I imagined it might be in the movie, but, you know, things change when you film a movie. So I was like, you know, film, scoring is so specific. How can I do this? But I just finally just trusted. He, he, had, he had trust, and... Um, we recorded all this score before they filmed so that they did have music when they were filming. And I'll be damned if every single piece of music that we filmed, uh, recorded before they filmed is all still in the movie, yeah. like, like bespoke. I mean, we, we barely made any adjustments on those specific cues because he just, he has it in his head and, and then he puts it up there, and I'd never experienced anything like that. Yeah, like when we're riding um, to Topsy's house, and it's like, na 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 it's sort of like the pre-reprise of Topsy's song and sort of this jazzy score. We were blasting that on the streets of London, um, and the whole tempo, every, every actor who's walking by as we're going is, is, is going to that tempo. It really does set the mood for, for everybody, and it's, it's like... What, what better way to, to sort of put us all in a pop in space, especially if we're in a practical location? To pick up on that, because Mark makes it sound so easy, but I have to go back just again to Rob, because the, his movies seem so seamless and so effortless. Directing an original musical and one this complicated for reasons you're now getting a glimpse of, starting with the, the, the amount of artists, the amount of craftswomen and craftsmen who flock to work with Rob. Directing an original musical is really, really challenging and sophisticated. It's not just the songs and the score, the things that are obvious. There's a musicality that's built into the way the camera moves, the way the lighting is, the way transitions from scene to scene. If you look at that animated sequence alone, think about it. Start it with an idea in Rob's head. It becomes a song and lyric. It gets arranged, it gets orchestrated, it is lit. It has a whole animation team under Rob's direction inventing the story, inventing this world, if you will. He's got the best actors in the world doing their best work. 
Um, and then it's all choreographed. There are penguins and live people doing, and he does the choreography with his partner, John. It you get is notes like, the penguin's a little heavier on the cane when you pull him up. It, it's it's really, uh, and I say that just because, I, I, because it's all true, and uh, as I said in the beginning, you're so, so lucky to, to get to work with Rob. I've sat on the stage before with some marvelous directors and in musicals as well, and this, this man is really something special, and you're getting a glimpse in these little details as to why, but you make it look so easy. Oh, and the other thing I want to say is the easiest job for a producer is casting a Rob Marshall movie because every actor in this town wants to come work with Rob, and you see why. It's just beautiful. So, Rob, thank you for all, from all of us, really. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.